Yeah. So the man your battle stations. Wow, I rushed that one. Because the sports generals are on patrol, and this is our NFL draft special. We are talking all things NFL draft. I'm sh- but I'm sure we'll get into a little bit of NBA playoff talk later in the show. But happy draft day. It feels I don't know happy about you. But it feels weird going into this draft and not having to say, which quarterback are we going to draft? Yeah, isn't that nice? Finally. Um, I think the, I think, that, I think round one of the draft should be a national holiday. I don't think anybody should have to work today. I think everybody should be able to sit at home and play with their mocks and wait for their team to pick. You mean, you mean like how everybody wants Super Bowl Sunday to be a national holiday? Yes. Well, or the day after. No, I thought I heard the day after nobody works on Sunday. Oh, good point. Uh, (laughs) So I guess it is unofficially. (laughs) I guess it unofficially is a national holiday then. Although, (laughs) though, rounds five through seven is on Sunday. So it's usually a weekend weekend type. Oh, Saturday. Actually, it's on Saturday because. Round one is tonight. Yeah. Rounds two and three are tomorrow. Rounds four through seven mm-hmm. are Saturday. They really milk this thing for everything they can. Yeah. Um. So let's let's just get right to it. So the Jaguars hold the number one pick for the second consecutive year. We know they're not going to go quarterback because they already have their guy with Trevor Lawrence. Um. I feel like this is the first draft in a while where we don't know who the first overall pick is going to be. I think it's starting to lean towards Trayvon Walker now, but I think that leading into the draft, we had a much better idea going into the day of, you know, whereas like we're just kind of learning this within the last 24 hours that um, it looks like they're leaning that way. Mm. I, all right. The key word is that that yesterday. And the key word is we, because best believe those GMs, they been knew exactly who they're going to take all along with the first pick. And there's a lot of smoke screens going on, everything you've been hearing from rumor mills. Just ignore mm-hmm. it because they just do that to get everyone in a frenzy. Uh, but now we're about to start to see if there's going to be trades made. Uh, today's the day when everything goes down. Yeah. Um. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is the most intriguing draft in the past 10 years because I don't I don't really see anybody like that's like, oh, you have to get this guy. He's gonna make a world of difference for your team. That's I disagree with you, and that way I think it's an underwhelming draft. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't look at, uh, I think this draft is going to be very forgettable. I, I don't necessarily think that there's many, you know, for sure things on this, uh, on the board right now. So uh, yeah, it's different. I agree with you that it's definitely different. It's a different feel. Um, but because there's no like star quarterback or like really standout guy that, you know, is going to be a slam dunk. Um, I think that this will be one of the years that down the road, we might not remember many names from. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you, Brian. Um, it's usually you can any type of draft that there occurs. There's usually a good five sure all stars from it, mm-hmm. or um, potentially more. This time they're saying it probably might only be two, if that. Um, it's not as deep as it used to be back in the day. Um, not sure if that's because of talent that's waiting to come out for next year's draft. Not really sure, but it really lacks it lacks a lot of um luster for this particular draft compared to years in the past. Yeah, there's no real star power for many of these guys. You know, there's some really good players on the board, don't get me wrong. Like some some stud guys that I think will be really good in the NFL. But in terms of like superstars, you know, I I don't I don't know that any of these guys necessarily will be other than the top five, maybe. Right. Um I think it's also interesting because in Past drafts, we've looked at the quarterback class and been like, okay, there's like one or two guys that we know are going to turn into something and be be spectacular. We we haven't really heard that with any of these quarterbacks in this class. Like people are saying Kenny Pickett, Matt 
and uh, Malik Willis are going to be drafted tonight. But I haven't heard like, oh, they're going to turn into like Josh Allen. They're going to turn into Patrick Mahomes. Right. Yeah, you're 100% correct, Josh. This quarterback class is very underwhelming. Um, there's no standout on the list. You know, there's the two guys you mentioned, I think, will go in the first round. Um, but that's more so just out of necessity and need, you know, teams need a guy. So they'll reach and take a guy higher than, you know, maybe they deserve to go. Um, and that happens all the time at quarterback. So for that reason, I think two of them go in the first round tonight. Um, but yeah, I agree with you, Josh. I don't think that Malik Willis uh, or Kenny Pickett are slam dunks by any means. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be um, a lot of overreaching in this draft. Yeah. And usually with tr- drafts, you see a lot of teams – either trading trading up to get somebody, I think you're going to see the opposite tonight. I think you're going to see a lot of teams trading down. Mm-hmm. That's how you, you acquire know, those yeah. extra picks for future, future years and get your uh, special teams filled up, your defense, or the back end of your defense field, a lot of roster spots, a lot of trade down, and just repiling or retooling for next year probably. Yeah. Teams yeah, are you like, can get a lot of value trading down if there's a guy that somebody really wants, you know. Yeah. So, I thought it would be fun if we did like a some, did this thing where give me your X factor teams. Like, what teams are you most what are you most interested in overall in the draft? Do you want me to start? Well, I, I, if you've I, got someone off the top, well, of your head, yeah, go ahead. yeah, I do. Team. It, for okay, me, it's the, for me by a huge margin. Actually, it's the New Orleans Saints. Um, okay. Because I could see them possibly going quarterback with one of their top two, with one of their first two first round picks tonight. I could see them going wide receiver. I could see them maybe trying to package those picks and moving up in the draft to get somebody that they really like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they have a new head coach. Jam- Jameis Winston is going to be coming off of a major injury. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with Michael Thomas. They brought in Jarvis Landry for a visit. So my answer might surprise you. I'm actually going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, mm. I-, I think losing Tyreek Hill and not really having, you know, that number one guy on their offense is uh, – it's a big hole there. You know, we don't know how Patrick Mahomes will do without Tyreek Hill. And they seem like a team that has the capital and the, that really has the necessity to maybe um, make a package and trade in, you know, trade into that first round, trade up and try to get a guy like Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave. Um, so I, I think that they're a team that's going to be interesting to watch because we've been so used to them just being so good and so loaded for so long where this year they actually have some spots on their team that, you know, they have some holes they need to fill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you you know what? I'll take a step further with this one. And um, it's got to be the 49ers, I would think. Uh, There's a few question marks that they have, which one being what are you going to do with Debo Samuels? Are you going to trade him to the Jets who happen to have pick inside the top 10? Um, what do you do uh, with Jimmy? Uh Jimmy is he's always hearing his name in trade talks or uh being released. What do you do with Jimmy Garoppolo? Because again, they have question marks at quarterback, they have question marks at wide receiver, and then they still have to shore up that offensive line and that defense. And what do you have with Trey Lance? Um, do you take the pick from the Jets if you trade? Steve Samuels, and do you use that for a quarterback to acknowledge that you made a mistake? Who knows? But Kyle Shanahan got his work cut out for him today. Okay. How about another one? Green Bay Packers. They have two first round picks tonight. They traded away Devontae Adams. So similar to Kansas City. If I don't know about you guys, but for me, it feels inevitable that they're going to use one of those first two, one of their two picks tonight on a wide receiver. Feels like. They have no choice but to do that, right? I disagree with you, though, because they've shown for so long that they don't do that. They don't take skill position players in the first round. So I don't think it is a slam dunk. I think it should be. 
I think they, for 100%, this should be the year they break that trend and actually go and get a re- wide receiver because I think they really need one, and I think there's some good ones in this draft. But, you know, they've shown that they don't, they don't like to take skill position players, in, you know, in the first round. And because of that, it's like I, I'm wondering if they will. And if we see this yeah. history repeat itself and then we get Rodgers all pissed off again because they didn't get his guy, you know, and it's uh, – so, yeah, I hope that they do the right thing. And I think that, Josh, that is the right thing for them to do. Um, but I don't know that they will. Yeah. yeah historically, they don't. They, that, like you said, uh, Ryan, they don't take those risks on getting skilled players within the first uh, round. However, there has been rumors uh, circulating with Aaron Weiler, uh, tied in from um, the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, who would be pretty much, we can all consider it, to be more of a higher, even though he's a tight end, it's more of a hybrid tight end that could probably be better than wide receivers in this year's draft. Uh, this year has deep, it's a deep draft for wide receivers, but that starlet that they just lost, he's not coming nowhere in that door. So, Darren, they may make a deal on that, but today is the day to find all of that information out. I'm wondering why the Raiders would want to trade Darren Waller when he – He's been an integral piece of their offense the past few seasons, and you put him in that offense with Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, yeah. Hunter Renfro. That's that, nasty. Mm-hmm. That's a really good offense. If I'm the Raiders, totally. If I'm the Raiders, I don't even entertain a trade offer from the Packers for Darren Waller. If the Packers call and say, "Hey, do you want?" Do you want to talk Darren Waller? I just say, no, thanks. Bye. But maybe the Raiders is looking at it from the standpoint, there's too many footballs to throw around. Um, Because, again, you're going to get a lot of attention now from the wide receiving core. And the odd man out, as strange as this may sound, is Darren. So they may be looking at it just to avoid a future uh, problem in train camp or just – um, some turmoil. Hey, let's get rid of that now. Let's pick up the phone. We do business with Packers, obviously. So uh, let's see what they have to offer for him because we may be looking to move him. But- yeah, they're paying a lot of money to uh, Devontae Adams, you know, and I think that has a lot to do with it too. You, there's only so much money to go Absolutely. around. There's only one football. Absolutely. So uh, because of that, I think that they will entertain, you know, the offer. And I think they have some other holes that they, you know, need to fill that, you know, makes sense for them to do this. So, yeah, I get that. Absolutely. But at the same time, like Jay, you talked about this, like he's an integral part of that wide receiving core. Like yeah. if he's not there, yeah. Devontae's getting a large majority of that attention. He's going to be the one drawing the double teams and stuff. Whereas if you have Waller there, teams aren't going to do a double team on Devontae because they're going to be like, shoot, yes. if we do, if we double Devontae, that leaves Darren Waller wide open. It's an abundance of riches. And like Waller has been probably top three tight end in the last four years. So it exactly. would be kind of bizarre to even move him. Like, I don't understand why, but uh, that's what the trade rumors. That's what rumors are for, is to start up drama such as the so. I don't yeah. know, man, but Wilder, that's a that's a great, great talent. Yeah, top three tight end, I would say. I would uh, say- well, as of one hour ago, it says Darren Waller ends any trade speculation with the Raiders. There's no trade that's going to happen. Mm. Um, so it appears that that situation may have come to an end. Um, okay. For now, yeah. Uh, or he, <laughs> I uh, still he, don't believe nothing. He, say. he doesn't want one, but um, yeah, uh, that's what I'm reading. 50 minutes ago, this article was published saying that there's no trade going to be uh-huh. happening. So we'll see. So, um, like we said earlier, usually we know who the number one pick is. So we say like, okay, the draft begins at number three, for example, or number four. But there isn't really like that starting point in this year's draft where people are going to say like, oh, the draft starts at this pick. You know what I mean? Right. True. But Yeah, years in the past, you always use it that way. (laughs) Right. 
But for me, the most intriguing pick of the first round is going to be number six with the Carolina Panthers. Um, I was actually on a show last night previewing the draft, and this guy, Ruben, said he thinks the Browns are actually going to use Baker Mayfield in a package to trade up to number six with Carolina. What do you think? Would be we don't have enough capital to do that. I think that's it, we don't have enough, enough to give them. I think he's overvaluing Maybe. Baker Mayfield because we don't have a lot of picks not- in this draft that we could package. Like we don't have the capital to make that happen. Like we we don't even Brown, have the capital to trade into that. the top twenty, let alone number six. One thing we learned about Brown though, um, he makes stuff happen that. You didn't even know it was even Sorry, an option. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think there's many slam dunks in this draft, Josh, but I do think that. Uh, Say that again. Your bro- Say that again, Brian. I, no, I was going to say there's no real slam dunks in this draft, I don't think, but to me. Uh, I think it's 100% certain that the Browns don't trade into the first round. I just don't think we have the pieces to do that. Yeah, uh, I agree. And to go, uh, yeah, I, I would be shocked. Like, I, I'd be willing to bet that the Browns don't trade into the first round. Like, I'd be willing to put quite a bit on that. I oh, just I'm don't not see taking, that happening. <laughs> I'm not taking that bet I because I would agree with you. Mm-hmm. You know what? I might jump on that, though, because history shows us – we may not drop in or try to jump into the top 10, uh, per se, but we always somehow try to get into that last, uh, the bottom of the first round. And uh, we do have a pretty good pick for um, the second round. So you never know. Again, this regime shows us that anything is possible and they got the money. Uh, well, they got the, the smarts in Berea now to execute some type of deal to uh, make maneuver impossible when you thought it wasn't even a chance. Yeah, I yeah. think we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. I just uh, usually we're dealing with a Browns team that has nine to twelve picks in the in the draft. You know, we've we always have a lot of draft capital, it seems, and this year we just don't, you know. So yeah, I agree with you that in the past that's something that like we've done and we've been willing to do. I just don't think that Baker Mayfield's good enough and we don't have a, a sexy enough pick to package with them that anybody will be willing to trade out of the first round or trade down for. So, yeah. So since you're on the Browns, what are your biggest needs that you want the Browns to address? For me, it's wide receiver and defensive end. Cause we don't know if they've re-signed Gadavian Clowney or not. And in my opinion, Amari Cooper is not a number one receiver. Right now, we have a number two wide receiver, a number three wide receiver in DPJ, Mm -hmm. and a number four wide receiver in Anthony Schwartz. I would agree with you there. I I think that we definitely have a deep need at wide receiver. Um, And then the defensive end, absolutely. You need somebody opposite Miles Garrett um, on the defensive line. We know how important that position is in football now and how important it is to get the quarterbacks and, you know, when you don't have that threat on the other side of the line, you know, it makes things harder on Miles. Um, so if Clowney isn't going to get signed and isn't returning, then you definitely have to address that. Um, so I would say you're you're 100 percent correct there. Those are the two needs. And coincidentally, the two deepest positions really of this draft are D end and wide receiver. So it actually ended up being a perfect scenario for the Browns, because even though we don't have a pick till number 44, the, the class is deep for wide receiver and for DN, so we're going to get a good player there. So that's the yeah. other reason I don't think trading up, you know, it's just like we'll get an okay player there at 44, and I think that that's what we're going to have to live with. Um, Jay, you there? I think he's froze. Yeah, I think, it's, I think Jay's screen is frozen, but we're going to keep going anyway. Um, for me, the pick player I want them to get at number 44, they may have to trade up a little bit higher in the second round to get him. But I would say Jahan Dodson, the wide receiver out of Penn State. Some 
Some people I've talked to view him as more of a speed guy. Um, but when I've watched Penn State uh, football games, I viewed him more as a like one of the big physical wide receivers. Um, so, do you- mm-hmm. I guess I, I I think that there's like I said, it's really deep at that position. So there's going to be so many options and. Uh, I, it's so hard for me to speculate who will be available at that point, you know? So that's, what's really hard for me. Um, being a Michigan guy, if by chance, David Ojabo slips out of the first round, that would be a great one. But uh, like you said, I don't think that he's going to fall that far. Like same with Dodson. Um, so I don't know if either of those guys is going to be available, Josh, but I do like, I do like the thought there. I think he's yeah. a really good player. Um, the- I agree with you about his, you know, his characteristics at Penn state uh, yeah. on the money. The only pushback I would have about Ojabo is like the Browns. I view the Browns as being in win now mode. And the thing with Ojabo is, is he going to be ready to go by the time training camp starts? Is he going to be able to play at all this season? And if that's not the case, do you want to waste your. Especially when you're looking at a potential Deshaun Watson suspension too. So do you want to take a guy who maybe not be ready for week one? That's a good point, Josh. Correct. That's a good point. Yeah, right. that's something they'll have to take into consideration. Um, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know if he'll be ready for week one. I, I really don't know what the speculation is there. Um, but I, I do know that he's he's near he's back of the first round, beginning of the second round level talent. So um, he kind of fits the bill. And he's also been on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. And I think that that role he played opposite Aiden – is really similar to the role he would play opposite of Miles Garrett. You know, where I, he's, he's the second guy. You know, he doesn't get all the attention. Right. Um, that's the only reason I really like that pick. Yeah. Uh, but that's also a little bit of a homer in me because yeah. I, I, I love that guy. I think he's great. Um, oh, from what I saw of him, because I watched a fair amount of Michigan football this year. Yeah. I really, really liked him. Yeah, so, I really like Dotson too. So yeah. I'd be totally – Totally happy with either of those guys. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, like, if one of the good wide receivers, like really talented guys, is still available there, which I don't think they will be, but, you know, then maybe take a receiver there. But I, I think that 44, the best option for the Browns is going to be to go D-line. Okay. What and then think? I think wide receiver later in the draft. because, mm-hmm. I, Like I said, it's a deep class. Um, there's some guys that are a little raw that have a lot of potential in this wide, wide receiver class that I think you can get great value on as a day two or day three guy. Yeah. So I think we have Jay back now. So let's bring him back in. There he is. There you are. Yeah. So I saw it. We're good. We were basically just speculating on who we think the Browns will take at 44. Um, so is there a player right. you like that you think will be available or um, – Best case scenario, you know, what do you do if you're Andrew Barry there? Well, you know, I think that we, for one, need secondary work. We need interior line work. It's it's not a sexy pick, the guys that I want, because uh, we have to shore up that defensive tackle. Uh, we need inside linebackers. And most importantly, our secondary was getting torched last year as we all can agree so yeah. I honestly think man we got to get we have to strengthen up on that defensive side of the ball I think the offense is already there I honestly think that yes uh, Mari Cooper you know is he a one is he a two that could be up for debate um, but we have the pieces in place which of course is number one at quarterback we still have our running uh, backs in, in play we still have our offensive line that's been shored up we're fine on that side of the ball so wide receiver that's that'll be second nature that's something i think we can attend to on second day or even third day of the draft but i think we need to really hunkle down and focus on that defensive line for sure or in our linebackers okay so based off of that is there a particular player you want the browns to draft at 44 which would be Unless they trade up into the first round, which it sounds like you think they could do, who do you have the Browns taking mm-hmm. with that number 44 pick? It's tricky. Um, well, 
the guy that I want, we won't be able to get because he's probably going in the top five. So I uh, automatically eliminate that. But if we had to trade in, give it the value that is that wide receiver. And I know I just said we need to address the defensive side of the ball, but like Drake London, right. I think that's something that if, we, if we're going to trade into the first round, let's say top 15, that's a key person I would want to address because it is best available, right? Um, even though we are at the stage where we could do team needs, we need the best available if we're going to trade in. So if we're going to trade in, let's take Drake London. Let's call it a day. But if we're going to stay put, uh, if we're only going to trade into the, the upper first round, let's focus on our defensive side of the ball and let's just let our picks come to us and take the take team needs. Okay. So here's a, I'll, let me throw out a player's name and then want to get your opinion. Christian Harris, the linebacker okay. from, Al- from Alabama. If he's available mm. at 44, do you take him? Yeah, yes, you do. Um, absolutely. Because that kid, he has the speed, he has the size. Most importantly, he plays in the SEC, and this regime for the Browns love SEC guys, finally. Love SEC guys, they love top-tier, big team guys. Um, so you absolutely, if he's available, you take him with that 44 pick. I absolutely agree with that. Okay. Brian, Sorry, I guys, just... I kind of missed that part. My dog was going bananas. You're fine. I was just asking uh, Jay if the linebacker from Alabama, Christian Harris, is available at 44. Do you take it? I like that pick at 44. Okay. I do. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he'll be there or not, but I, I like that pick. Yeah. And then um, that's a good there's a value guy, pick. Yeah. There's a guy in George Karlaftis that. Uh, some drafts uh, projections have him going 28 to the Packers. So that's pretty low. Um, there's a chance that guy could slip to 44. Um, that would be the best case scenario, in my opinion, because he I think he's going to be good. Okay. So Carl Aftis, if he's available, is my best case scenario. But I, I really don't think that he will be. But yeah. Never know. You know, there's a lot of question marks in this draft. So anything can happen. The other guy I would love to see the Browns draft. I'm not – I don't think he'll be available, but maybe if teams for some reason decide not to take him. N'Kobe Dean from mm. Georgia, I think he would fit in perfectly with what Joe Woods wants to do defensively. I think he would play so well and be, and benefit from playing on a defense with Miles Garrett. I agree with you. Yeah, that would be yeah, solid. Yeah. Um, it was wreckage having uh, in the championship game. So, yeah, I mean, any SEC guy, anybody that you could get on that field, that play, you try, you have to take a gamble on them because it's, like we said, this draft isn't as strong as it used to be, but we do know SEC is always strong every single year, and you're always going to get, whether you're going to get a starter, whether you get an all-star, perennial um, all-star player, or – whether you get a um, like a special teams guy or someone that you can plug in, you're always going to have that with the SEC guy. So definitely, um, anybody on that field, you got to take a gamble on if they're available. Yeah. So, like, I'm not going to suggest that we do Alabama against the worst team in football because we versus the worst team in the NFL because we because we know what would happen. The the Jaguars would still destroy Alabama. But my overall point, though, is like the SEC is like the NFL generator. It feels like. Is yeah, right? I think SEC guys are they're the best prepared to play in the NFL, just because it's the strongest conference in college football right now. So I agree in that aspect. It's they're they're guys that are often more NFL ready. Um, but I also think that there's you know Pac-12 guys, Big 12 guys, Big 10 guys. Like, that's where you could find some really raw talent. You know, some guys that were, you know, maybe not five stars coming out of high school, but have really high ceilings, you know. So I I do think that it's worth exploring, you know, other options in other divisions. I don't necessarily think it's SEC or bust, but I agree that SEC, if you're looking for pro-ready guys, that's, that's a good place to start looking. Yeah. 
The other name I let's see if you get let's see if you get more specific. If you're looking for offensive line, defensive line, or just those um, front front seven in people, SEC that's that's the area to go in. But if you're looking for a quarterback, probably Pac-12, you know, somewhere along those lines, Big Twelve, who knows? But SEC, if you need your 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 big your, your bread earners, you go to SEC to get the big guys filled up. Yeah, and speaking of quarterbacks, we said this earlier. There's not really that go get him type of quarterback. Like Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, they're nice players, but we don't know if they're going to turn into anything. Um, I'll give you my hot take though. Right now, I said this yesterday on So What's mm-hmm. the Catch. I think the Carolina Panthers with the sixth pick are taking Kenny Pickett from Pitt. Ooh, that is a hot take. Tell me I, why. That's why super hot. That? Yeah, why do you think that? <laughs> um, I just feel like Kenny Pickett fits right into that offense where they don't need like a running, running style quarterback like Malik Willis. That he. I would say Carolina wants to run more of a pro-style offense based on what I've seen from them. Matt Rule knows he's on the hot seat, or I guess he is the hot seat. Um, so, uh, oh, for sure. Wow, your dog really agrees with what we're saying. <laughs> um, but I just think being that Matt Rule knows how big of how much of a hot seat he's on, he he th- he knows he has to get a quarterback that is the most pro ready, and it feels like, based on my observations anyway, Kenny Pickett would fit that mold for them. I I yeah, agree. But if he's trying to save his job, he might want to get him a uh, veteran. <sighs> uh, I yeah, it's, it's, it's too risky. It's too risky to take Pickett that high. Um, in my opinion, he is not a first-round talent at quarterback. The only reason I think he goes in the first round is just because it's a, a really weak quarterback class. Um, so while I agree with you that, yeah, he fits stylistically better, I just don't think he's good enough to take him that high. So right. I, I think that that would be hey, a Josh, really you good move for a coach on a hot seat. You know, for a coach on a hot seat to take a guy that's a project, that would not be the, the smartest move for Rule. Hey, you want something, Josh. Um Yes, if we think about this, right, Baker Mayfield is the best quarterback. If, if he was in this draft, he would probably be the first pick of this draft. He's the best one that would you would think the Panthers would be more comfortable with, um, a proven veteran. Uh, yeah, we know about his accuracies and all the other stuff, but is he better than the kids in the draft today? I think that's a yes. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's a weak QB class. Yeah. Um, that's not saying much, to be honest. <laughs> right. I think uh, right. I, Malik Willis, I think, will end up being – he'll have a solid NFL career. I think he'll be a good backup somewhere. Mm. Um, he does have the potential to maybe be a number one guy eventually, but I think he's raw right now, especially coming out of Liberty where he mm. you know, played against some weaker competition. But he's a guy that has the build. Mm. He has the arm strength. He fits the bill of what NFL is looking for in a quarterback. So he's a guy that ultimately I think is the most successful out of this draft. And I do think he'll be better than Baker Mm. Mayfield. But I I think you're right. A lot of people would say that he's the best quarterback in this draft class if he was in it. Yeah. Um, Mm. And I think we're going to be playing against Malik Willis twice a season. Yeah, I Um, think you're right. I think that Pittsburgh is where he's going to end up, right there at number 20. Yep. I I actually thought about this because I believe yesterday I said on the show that on So What's the Catch that the Steelers might have to trade up to get him. Mm-hmm. But I've looked, I've looked more closely at the draft order. There's not a lot of teams in that 6 to 20 range that seem quarterback needy. So <clears throat> I think. Yeah, this, outside of a, like New Orleans. Yeah. New Orleans would be the team to watch that may if they trade. Up, yeah, if they made that trade that you were talking about earlier, um, they would be a team to keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah, I think you were right on the money about that one. Yeah. 
So this, uh, I'm actually looking at a mock draft right now. Um, and this one has them, uh, the Saints trading into the first round to pick 16 from the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that trade already happened. Oh, did that go through? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Then if that went through, then yeah. The, the, right there at number 16, I think, would be a, a place that, you know, the Saints might reach and take a guy at quarterback. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the official draft order for, on NFL.com. Yep, the Saints are um, at number 16. Okay, cool. Yeah, they have picked 16 and 19. Yeah, I think if uh, if Pickett's going to go in the first round, I think that that would be a more reasonable spot for him to land. Um, at 19, I think, is the area where I think he would be. Um, that's like the highest I could see him going is at that 19 spot. Yeah, I understand that. I don't think... Pickett should go at number six, but right. I totally get what you're saying though. You know, there's teams that have a need there. And when you have a need guys, historically they've shown that they'll reach on a guy. Correct. So yeah, I agree. It's possible. It's definitely possible, but um, it, my money goes on him not going in the top 15. I would say that 19 pick, I think is where he would land. Um, and then ironically enough, the Steelers at 20, take Malik Willis. So yeah, I actually see Pickett potentially going before Willis in this draft now. Yeah. Now I realize that that number 19 pick is solidified with the Saints. Um, I actually think the Steelers, because of the Saints fa- factor, I think the Steelers might actually need to trade up ahead of the Saints. So maybe they try and swing a trade. The Steelers right now are at 20. Maybe they try and swing a trade with uh, Minnesota at 12 or Philadelphia at 15 to try and get ahead of the Saints because, again, maybe New Orleans is looking at Malik Willis. Yeah, and I think that Malik Willis... Malik Willis appears to be one. Go what ahead. was that? Go ahead. No, you, you insist. Uh, um, no, I was just saying Malik Willis kind of fits the bill of that New Orleans quarterback. Like they had Jameis Winston there. He reminds me a lot of Jameis Winston, Malik Willis. Um, so I think that that would be a good mm. fit for Malik. So you might be right. They might have to move up to avoid, you know, taking a chance of him not being there. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. The same- and, he, and, and they say he's a prospect. He's a future prospect that, you know, given if he goes to the right system, um, develop, sits under the right uh, teacher or the mentor at quarterback. He's somebody that could be a problem in the future, but as of right now, he's just too raw, like you indicated. But from Liberty, yeah. it's, it's a tall task for him. But he I, think the tools for sure. I think the Falcons could potentially take Malik Willis, too. I could see him going there, um, and that wouldn't be a bad yeah. thing for him either. Um, you know, they're no, looking to replace Matt Ryan there. So they've definitely got a need there. And, uh, you know, he's a, a guy that I feel like they could plug in that offense and he would fit pretty well. Yeah, because they got some pieces there. You know, they already got talent as it is. I know that they're indicating about potentially getting a wide receiver uh, to mm-hmm. replace um, Calvin really. But, you know, they took Calvin Pitts. Uh, Offensive line definitely needs some work on it, but they missing that quarterback piece now that Matt Ryan's gone. So who knows, man? It's a, it's just the beauty of life. I know. It's like it's you don't so know the uncertainty. Do. Yeah, there's so many things that could happen, so many moves, so many trades. It's everything's so up in the air right now. Anybody that has a mock draft and they think that they've got it right, like I, I got news for you. I don't think anybody's got this one. Right. <laughs> right. I think this is going to be one of those drafts where everybody's just kind of like, huh? Um, and yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of stuff that's up in the air. There's things that can happen. You know, weirder things have happened in the NFL. So, you know how they like how it's very rare to have a perfect bracket for March Madness. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. much impossible to have a perfect mock draft because Teams are going to surprise. I would even argue that's harder. <laughs> yeah. I would argue that's harder. Just Probably harder so than a lot of people. Mm-hmm. There's so many people Pick in the four. draft from, you know. 
even getting the 32 players right and not the order would be incredible. You know what I mean? Like if you could name everybody that goes in the first round, regardless of order, that would still be incredible. Yeah. Like nobody gets these things 100% right. The guys we look to like Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay, even them, you know, they're only getting 15, 20% of the first round right. And they're guys. Todd, 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 Todd. Yeah, those guys don't get it all right. You know, and if anybody's going to get it all right, it's those guys. Right. Um, it's interesting that, like, the NFL draft gets all this media attention and stuff. And the NBA draft gets it to a certain extent, not nearly this much. And then you don't really hear anything from the MLB draft or the NHL draft, MLS draft. Well, it's because, for one thing, it's because football is the biggest sport. But right. for another thing, it's it's the only sport where the college – like basketball a little bit, but there's only two rounds of that draft, you know, so that's a little bit watered down. Um, but, like, football is the only big college sport where you're familiar with the guys in the draft. You know what I mean? Everybody watches mm-hmm. college football in this country that's a football fan so like you're familiar with these guys a little bit whereas a lot of people that are nba fans they don't watch a single college basketball game so they're kind of just learning about these guys so i think because of that the familiarity with the players um that's why this one is very digestible it's like you know what i mean there's there's a lot of hype surrounding it and then with baseball there's just too many damn rounds and the other thing with baseball is guys take <laughs> three, four or five years before they ever make it to the big leagues. So, you know, it, it, you're yeah. not seeing the immediate impact from these guys. And then hockey and soccer, it's just who gives a damn because they're just – that's number four and number five in this country. That's why I think it, the, the NFL's draft is so much, you know, over those yeah. drafts. The other thing with the baseball draft, too, too is like players who get drafted out of high school – they can exactly. just say, nope, I'm not – I'm going back to school. And Yeah, and I'm, then in the hockey draft, uh, players get drafted before they're done playing college hockey. So, like, the Michigan Wolverines were in the Frozen Four this past year. They lost to Denver, unfortunately. But they had three of the top – or four, excuse me, four of the top five NHL draft picks um, on the ice. You know, and, and so that's the other reason, too, with that draft it's like – a draft happens, but they're still playing. You know, they just get the rights on to them. Um, so, yeah, the, this is the only one where it's like you see the guys on Saturday and then, boom, you know you're going to see them on Sunday the next year. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's that familiarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I love that the NFL started this new thing of bringing the draft to different cities and stuff. It's fantastic. I, yeah, cool. I, I love do too. It. I love it, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the most. It's a great way for the cities to earn revenue. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the most unique events in all of sports. Like to be completely honest, it's so unique. It's there. It's not a game. It's not action. You know, this is an off-season thing, and it's such a big deal. You know what I mean? Like more people are going to watch first round of the NHL or of the NFL draft tonight than are going to watch Thursday night baseball. You know what I mean? Like. It's going to play off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's an NFL is king. It's a cool event. And I think you're right. Moving it around city to city. It's a, it's a really cool way um, to give people a chance to experience the NFL in a different way. And it's really cool when they have like guest um, pickers who like poke fun at the host team. Like I remember who was it in Dallas that just made Talk shit about the Cowboys. I don't remember who it was. Billy White, Billy White dudes or somebody like that. Yeah, they. Oh, I think it was it's, it's 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 a lot of time. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was a kicker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I don't oh. remember. His, it was a kicker for the Eagles. Like he made. He was dropped. It Jay a Jay, Jay, Jay Feely, I think. Guy. Yeah, actually, the Michigan guy. He, he, he he's the talker too. Yeah. He can God, I, God, now I'm I'm not sure. I don't remember who it was. I'll have to look it up and send you the video. Was it Pat McAfee? Are you talking about McAfee for the Colts? He's no. announced the Colts draft picks a couple times. Now I gotta look this up. <laughs> Cause it's yeah, I, I remember what you're talking about, Josh. He alienated the fans too. <laughs> Cause he like the world. I, 
was somebody the world champion? Was it the Eagles? Somebody where they had just won a championship, I believe. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but it was very, very like, ooh, I hope security's standing around because mm. uh, fans are starting to get a little bit more antsy feeling their alcohol now. Yeah. Um, see. Especially when it was here. When, when it was yeah. here, uh, Stillers, anytime I mention the Stillers name, you hear the boo start to serenade. And um, even when Roger Goodell comes out, I boo at this TV when I see him walk out on stage. So. Is that's yeah, it's, it's it seemed like that's a ritual. I wish we would have got the draft <laughs> in Cleveland in a non pandemic year because it, it just wasn't mm. as it would have been such a huge event here. It was still a huge event, it you know, it still went off pretty well, all things mm. considered. But you know, if it was a normal mm. draft or like the public was just could access it, you know, I think it would have been massive here in Cleveland. So I hope they bring it back soon. Me too. Because it was good for the economy. Um, That's who it was. It was David Akers. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Sorry. I I think he showed his his ring, too. (laughs) Sorry. I was just extremely focused on trying to figure out who it was. I was like zoned in on that. Um, I have a good question for you guys that we didn't cover in the show yesterday. Uh, who do you think is the best defensive back in the draft? Do you think it's uh, Kyle Hamilton at safety? Do you think it's Sauce Gardner at cornerback or Derek Stingley? Um, I'm going to go first since I have a question. I have it ready. Um, I like Stingley the best from LSU. I think that it, if I'm an NFL GM, I think he's the guy that's going to have the, the biggest impact. Um, I think he's ready to play now. Um, so I would say him. And then I'd have Kyle Hamilton at two at safety, and then I would have uh, Sauce Gardner at three. Yeah. Um, I like Sauce Gardner. I like Sauce Gardner a lot. I think he, he is potentially a pro future proler in the making. Um, he had great cover time, uh, mm-hmm. but I think his footwork is the best out of all of the cornerbacks in this year's draft. Um, but he comes from Cincinnati, so, you know, is he really going against top-tier competition you know, that's up for debate. But when he did go against top tier competition, um, he definitely performed at a high level. Uh, Stingray, he's more of a that's a Browns type of guy. You know, that's a um, uh, greedy Willie. He's from that camp. And yeah. we love LSU defensive back for some reason. So, you know, I'll probably have him great as the second one. I would say Kyle Hamilton, excuse me, Kyle Hamilton, number one. Um, I think he's a bit more proven than Stingley or Sauce Gardner. Um, But I would have Stingley number two. And then I would have Sauce Gardner number three. It's kind of the same reason, too. Like, he went to Cincinnati. Was he going against the best wide receivers? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Remains to be seen. Yeah. He's the fastest, though. I think he's the fastest and the tallest. He's a stud. Yeah, I think Kyle Hamilton's going to be a slam dunk. And then I, Daxton Hill, he's a guy from Michigan that I think to keep an eye on. I think that he's um, not a first-round talent, but he's a day-two guy that I think can have a big impact in the NFL. Um, you know, he brings a lot of the same things to the table that Jabril Peppers brought um, out of Michigan. He's a guy that can do it all from that position. He, he plays the hybrid outside linebacker position. He'll play the nickel corner spot. Um, And then he can, you know, be a ball hawk as a traditional free safety. Um, And then, Jason, you mentioned, you know, the thing to remember during the draft is guys need special teams players, too. And uh, Dax Hill is a guy that can return kicks. He can return kicks and return punts, too. The dude can fly. So I think he's a good guy to keep an eye on on day two. Um, Someone's going to get a really good player in him and be real happy with him, I think. Yeah. I think the Browns should try and draft a kicker at some point in this draft because – I'm not sold on Chase McLaughlin as our kicker. No, if there's, you know, yeah, if there's a guy there in the sixth or seventh round that, that you, they really like, uh, I agree. I don't have any problem with taking a kicker in the draft. Uh, obviously not day one, day two, but day three, yeah. if there's a guy there, then absolutely. Yeah, don't pull a Tampa Bay yeah, Buccaneer. We, I mean, that's <laughs> We saw how important special teams was in the postseason last year. You know, we saw how teams like Green Bay were negatively affected by it. 
Um, and, and nobody wants to end up in that same boat that Green Bay was in and, and special teams essentially losing them their shot at a title. Yeah. Special teams um, are always important. So. Yeah. Just as long as teams don't pull Tampa Bay. What? <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> oh. What else do we got? Where do you guys think Baker ends up? Seattle? Yeah, Seattle feels most likely. It's the most reasonable one, Seattle. I mean, I don't see why the Panthers don't pull the trigger, but probably Seattle. Do you think the Browns could possibly put him in a package and get up to that number nine pick? No, I don't. That would be lovely. (laughs) Don't say that we got enough capital to make it happen, but, man, I mix to make that happen. Mm. I mean, what what would you add with Baker Mayfield? Like, in this, you know what I mean? Like, right. Maybe nothing to really offer them that's going to really stand out because they obviously aren't crazy about Baker. They they wouldn't have been entertaining the thought of bringing back Colin Kaepernick if they were certain about Baker that, you know, they would have made this move by now. So, yeah, it that's feels the only like- reason I think it's still kind of up in the air. It feels like any team who is crazy about Baker Mayfield would have pulled the trigger by now. Yep. And that's why I think that, like, we don't, like, we would have got traded into the first round by now if we could. Mm. I don't think, you know what I mean? I don't think that's something they would put off till the day of the draft. Right. But crazy sometimes things they do, though. Happen. You never know. Getting Josh Rosen. We would have to offer him another player. We would have to, or cut some of the salary, like, we would have to pick up some of Baker's salary and be willing to pay some of that um, for it to be juicy enough for them to maybe give a first rounder. Okay, so maybe you do like Baker Mayfield, Dearness Johnson in the forty fourth pick, and I still don't think that's good uh-huh. enough to get for the nine spot. I wouldn't trade the number nine pick for that. I wouldn't want to pull it. I wouldn't want to do that. I, I, th- I think we got to look at it from the angle of who's more important. Who? What piece are we missing in this draft? That takes us to the next level. And I, I d- honestly don't see any of the kids that just puts us over the top. So mm-hmm. I would want to yeah. get rid of all of those pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. Um, so I'm trying I'm trying to say see if there's any other trades that could work, but other than Carolina and Seattle. I don't see anybody else who the Browns could trade Baker Mayfield to. I know. That's like our only dance partners. You know, it's like we got to pick one or the other. And at this point, I don't know that either one of them are, are crazy enough about them to, to make a move for. Right. And the other problem is, like, the Steelers have pretty much said, yeah, if we if you cut him, we're going to take him. Mm-hmm. Like, do you run that risk and possibly have him come back to haunt you by being paired with Mike Tomlin? I think that's the only risk you run is having to pay all that money. That's uh, it's, too, it's too much of a uh, of a financial hit. There, there is no risk in giving Baker Mayfield to the Steelers. None. So, would you consider trading him to the Steelers then? Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't, but they don't like him. If they, you know, if they did, they would make a move for him and not wait until he's cut. You know, like they they like him as a backup guy. They don't like him as a starter. You know I'll tell you this. If you have a car and you know it has, if you got, if you have a car, you know it has a transmission issue, and your neighbor that you don't like want to buy it. Hey, why not settle that car and do business yeah, with them? Because you know they're going to need a new transmission. Yeah, I don't think so. I trade with them. Mike Tomlin, is, in my opinion, is the best coach not named Bill Belichick in the NFL. I've made that opinion clear, but he's not a good enough coach to make Baker Mayfield a good starting quarterback in the NFL. Nobody is. I agree with you about on your point about Mike Tomlin being the best coach in the NFL, not named Bill Belichick. He's awesome. I mean, the this is, the amount of success that they have sustained, um, you know, over the years, and and him never having a losing season, it's just remarkable. You know, like every every team has a down year once in a while, and and their down year is always better than a lot of teams' up years. So he's just shown that no matter what pieces that roster has, like he could put it put together a winner. Yeah. 
But let me ask you this. With Mitch Trubisky as their starting quarterback, maybe they draft Malik Willis. Maybe they don't. We'll see. Is this the first year that they have an actual losing season? Could be. Uh, I think it very well could be. I don't, I I don't so. know. Yeah, I hope so. I would love to. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. But you I never know. Yeah, Hopefully, all the all these is a loser season, but they may be tanking. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a tank year, but they never do. I mean, yeah, I think the fact that they're so interested in Malik Willis shows that they're looking in the future more so than they're looking to win right now. Yeah. So there's a very real possibility that you know they hover around the 500 yard or 500 mark and not over it. So it'll be interesting to see. This is definitely the the most up in the air Steelers season that I can remember in a long time. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, a lot of great, a lot of great players on that team and on that defense, though. So. Yeah, TJ Watt, the, mm-hmm. he's going to continue to just wreck offensive linemen and eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Did you guys want to do your therapy Thursdays? We got about a minute left. Yeah. So I don't have one. So you go ahead and go. All right. I am. I'll do my a separate video about this on my own YouTube channel. But I am for my therapy Thursday. I am calling out the NHL, the Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Here's why: most likely, the NHL is not coming to Cleveland anytime soon, if ever. So bring the Columbus Blue Jackets and Pittsburgh Penguins should do some sort of game up here in Cleveland, whether it's an exhibition game or some type of regular season game. I don't care. But NHL, Pittsburgh Penguins, Columbus Blue Jackets, I'm calling you out. Do a game here in Cleveland. Wow. That, are you high on drugs? Are you high on drugs? <laughs> Especially if it's a rival city like Cleveland. That's like saying that. Be nice. <laughs> like if you live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and you're like, you know what? The Steelers should come play in Harrisburg. Like, why wouldn't they play in Pittsburgh? That's their home. No, I'm not saying hey, I'll tell you this. I know you're not. It's silly, though. Like, when do, when do teams play at different – like, the only reason for a new location is it's like a playoff, you know, some kind of tournament game. Like Buffalo or Toronto. No. Yeah, I, oh, I got a therapy Thursdays. First, you know, um, this is directed, and you said this a few shows ago, the cowards in Brooklyn. Uh, okay, this collapse, this sweep with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Ben Simmons. It, it, it's so much information that I'm actually going to talk about this on Manalytics as usual, because I really want to make sure everybody get their roses while they can smell it for the Brooklyn organization. Uh, but Ben Simmons, what was the circus that went on there? Why do you come on the sideline all dappered up, got your shades on, uh, looking like everything is good, but then when it's time for you to play, oh, my back hurts. Oh, um, I want to use the mental health card. I know mental health is nothing to uh, play around with, but when you're using that just as a tool or as a mechanism, mechanism to pay because your contract stipulations indicated that's when you gotta look yourself in the mirror and say why why be disgraceful to not only the fans not only the team that's paying me but why be disgraceful to, to myself so i'm gonna go in on these guys but brooklyn what an absolute utter disgrace yeah, what a disaster of a season that ended up being for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, I did not have anything to prepare for Therapy Thursday. I forgot about it. Um, so I'm just going to vent. Like, the, this Guardians losing streak is hurting my soul. Um, and I really hope that the bats can get warmed back up. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess I'll pick a bone with uh, MLB umpiring just because it's been absolutely dreadful. Obviously, there is the storylines with Angel Hernandez and him blowing multiple calls. Um, but it's a league-wide issue. It wasn't just a, a singular issue. Um, so, yeah, it, my, my therapy Thursday is MLB needs to get their shit together and get the umpiring situation figured out um, because it's, it's become a storyline of every one of these games. And 
you don't want the referees and the umpires to be the storyline of a game ever. So do yeah. better. Ever. Do better <laughs> All right. Well, no better and do better. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was our NFL draft preview show. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, make sure you like, share, and subscribe the Sports Generals YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to all three of our YouTube channels. And uh, we will be with you for the next episode of the Sports Generals here on the So What's the Catch Facebook page. You guys want to plug anything else? I just want to say, don't miss it. Next week, we will be recapping the draft and everything that our beloved yeah. Cleveland Browns did. Um, we're all Cleveland Browns guys. We know that that's, you know, the big part of our fan base is Browns fans. So if you want more Browns football news in the off season, this is the show to follow because we will keep updating you as the off season progresses. Correct. Also, go, go Raptors. Go Browns. Beat, beat the 76ers. I want a game seven. And I want to see the 76ers collapse. Another disgrace. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, tune in next week. We'll it's going to be very interesting. But good show, guys. I think that was a good one. Have right. fun. Good show.